before we get into all the work you do you, the, for TMI worldwide, mm -hmm. you do a lot of other things, right? So you have this project with Akon, Akon Lighting Africa, which we would talk about for sure. How do you combine all these different things? Because there is this main focus in your life, right? Right, and um, you know what people don't know? I'm the youngest. I have five, four brothers. I'm the youngest of five. I basically manage all my brothers and my dad and my mom. I'm the only person in the family that talks to everyone every single day. Mm -hmm. So outside of Akon, I have another brother by the name of Boo. He was, you know, he A&R'd the Rihanna Loud and Talk That Talk album, Watch the Throne and things like that. So even his world, I help manage that. Um, so it's... It's interesting. I, I don't know. I think because I am the youngest, it's something about being the youngest, you are wise at an early age. Um, and I think with it being family, you know that their lives basically, their life, you depend on what their future is as well. I know that if my brother Boo or Akon doesn't do, do well, my future is not going to look too bright as well. So, you know, you're helping them, but knowing that in, in the end, you're also helping yourself and your kids, my own kids. There are good deals and bad deals, right? Hopefully we're not talking about recording deals. That's a whole... No, no, no. Not, okay. about, no, 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 not about recording <laughs> deals. No, no, no. We're talking about brand deals for artists. We're talking about connect, like reaching out to uh, a different people in different ways other than music. Because, yeah. Yeah. So what are recording the... Recording deals. Don't do album deals. But go ahead. Sorry? I said for recording deals, don't do album deals. Okay. Okay. I just wanted write to write that down. That. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, what are some things you've learned from being Akon's sister? Not even working oh for him, gosh. but being his sister and seeing him in different positions, in different, you know? Yeah. Whew. Um, honestly, because there's the good, bad, and the ugly of the music career. Um, and thank God the most that you see is the good because no one really publicizes the ugly unless a journalist gets the story, honestly. But um, if I learned anything, it's about deals, guys. You know, um, I think early on with an artist and just wanting to be out there, they may be a little blind to the black and white, which is the paper, which is the thing that ultimately controls your life for a certain amount of time depending on what you signed, you know. So a lot of artists, I think it's because, you know, once they come into their first deal, they may not have any legal representation or something like that. And there's a lot of times where the person signing, signing them, they use their legal representation, yeah. um, which obviously you shouldn't do. But, you know, I, if you're going to take that step to be an artist, there's an investment that comes with that. Um, and I can understand you may not have, you know, you not, may not be financially stable to go out and do that, but then you have your friends, you have your family, that's ultimately your community, you know, and that's an investment you need to make is legal representation and make sure that what you're signing is in your best interest. Is that one of the biggest misconceptions that in the beginning of a career you just don't need that or... I don't know if it's a misconception. I feel like artists know it, but just in the moment, mm -hmm. and they're like, well, this is my chance. This is what I've been waiting Maybe for. Maybe they feel like they're in charge, so. I guess. Yeah. But the paper is in charge. When you need it the most, it's like, oh, but you signed this, you know? So yeah. just get legal representation and don't sign album deals. Okay, no album deals. In your work, you have a lot of deals that you talk about with artists, with brands. Uh, maybe you think of deals that can happen. Mm -hmm. What is the first deal you landed? Like, what is the oh, first... Honestly. Do oh, you sorry. remember? No, no, go right ahead. Yeah, well, yes. I know I didn't land this one personally, but I was involved, and this is kind of what showed me that I wanted to get into the branding world. Um, it was about 2011, and it was an H&M... A uh, partnership with Akon, Carrie Hilson for AIDS. And just that collaboration alone, me seeing how H&M dealt with the talent 
and making sure that at all times, because it's AIDS and it's kind of a sensitive subject, that they were comfortable and this was authentic to them, with Akon being a male and they had him in all the brightest colors, you know, but still, you know, making sure that he felt also masculine in his role as he also promoted, you know, the cause. So that, I would say, would be one of my first and deals that set a milestone for me uh, for the future as well. What was challenging about that deal? Was it the tone of voice or the subject? Or? You know, because it's sensitive. It's very sensitive, and I think the world is more open now than it may have been eight years ago. Um, so for them to also kind of touch in that space of sexuality and things at, at such a time where it may not be as open, like I said, as it is now, but still be successful with the campaign, you know, just showed me, one, there's people out there that, you know, are relating to these causes, and actually that is what's going to overshadow any of the other noise, you know, so that really helped. How do you know you found a good deal? Um, can be with a brand or with a label. How do you know when it is okay to go forward to it? Okay, I would say the number one thing, there's a way out of the deal. Because we're only human. We honestly don't know. We could feel certain things and say, oh, you know what, this is a good partnership. But we honestly don't know. You know, you don't really can't foresee the future. So just make sure that there's always a clean way out of a deal for you as the artist. So But, how, do you, yeah. how do you know what people to put in your team? People that follow up and execute. Follow up and execute. And... I don't know, I don't even, I think that's a, just a skill from God. I really don't, I couldn't even, if you ask, how do you know who follows up? I don't know, honestly. But it's like, for instance, like the One Young World Summit. If, I, if Akon gives me a card, I follow up. I know who's important and who's not. I follow up with that person. Everything in this industry is relationships. I mean, where I am today, I couldn't have opened my boutique consultant company if I didn't at least nurture and maintain the relationships I've, you know, grown all these years, so. Um, I just wanted to pick on uh, what you said, like, twice or three times, not signing an album, because I assume, like, as an artist, you have a project, whether you call it an album, whatever. Yeah. So what type of deals would you recommend an artist to sign? Honestly, I would say a single deal, because you also want to know what you're getting yourself into, so... so That's what I would say. So you mean like testing the waters first? You, on both sides, for them and for you. You know, and I know there's more money in the album deals, but at the end of the day, an advance is just a loan, so. Exactly. Having such big dreams, and I can imagine that a lot of artists have such big dreams. How do you start? Is it by creating a good team around you? Is it by um, just putting out the music that you feel? Where, where do you begin to form such a dream? I would say start with your music, because your music is the platform that's going to create the influence, right? And I'm not saying at the level you are, you need to know right now what live you're going to save. You need to know right now. What, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying right now, you know, one step at a time, focus on your music. And then as that grow, as you travel the world, or maybe there's something personal to you, You know, it'll start to speak to you when it needs to. So don't, you don't have to really stress on that. But, you know, really, where to start is with you and your music right now. Yeah. So what was the point in Aiken's career that he decided to do this? So um, he was just talking about this today, that for him... You know, he had reached his peak in music because he, you know, did a song with Michael Jackson, Quincy Jones, Whitney Houston, and all that. So in his mind, it's... He Ali felt, Bay and Yes Sir. Oak. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know what you told me about you remember? that, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> so for him, he's like, I feel like I've reached my peak here. You know, so anything, the more that I could do now was to kind of live outside myself and see, like, how can I help the world at this point? That's beautiful. And he's still continuing Listen, this. Yes, and he's just coming up with idea after. You guys just pray for me. Because the guy is just <laughs> idea after idea. And he doesn't take no for an answer. So, uh, Besides from Aiken, have you ever been inspired by a, a combination between a brand and an artist that you felt like, this is perfect, actually? 
it's it's maybe what's happening fit. recently with like the Colin Kaepernick stuff with Nike, because honestly, in, in our history, you'll see that brands, when they see any kind of controversy or something, they step back. And for them to just say, we see that you have a cause, we'll take the backlash, but we're here to support you. I mean, that's a lot of flack that they're also taking. So it's a 50-50 partnership, and more relationships need to be like that. Because like I said, they'll endorse you as soon as you have one bad press that may be super false, which I've lived through that, they just drop you like they've never known you. So, How do you pick yourself up after that? Ooh. It's hard, though. It's hard because the media almost dictates who you... It draws a painting of who you are. So you have to do things extreme like what Akon's doing and show that you're making an impact in the world. Um, you know, to really for people to believe, okay, maybe he's not that guy or maybe she's not that person. So it is hard. So what is the, the route for an artist to find its way is first create music, then... Find the people that... Put out the music. Put out the music, of course. Put out the music. Put out the music. Put out the music. Stop. Oh, I'm waiting for the right plan, the right moment. No, put out the music, please. Let the music speak for itself. I met this artist. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're feeling very I passionate about I met this it. artist yeah. the other day, and he's telling me, oh, I met you, blah, before your brother gave me your... I don't know. And I'm like, okay, how can I listen to your music? You have a SoundCloud or anything? He's like, no. Like, yeah. what is happening? I'm like, so do you want at your funeral that people are like, oh, Sam Jones, God, he would have been such a nice artist. He had this one song. Oh, you guys don't know this song. It was in his laptop. <laughs> like, come on, like, put it out. Okay, so make music. I don't music. know why we got on this topic. Put out this the is, music. Please put it out. Please put it out. And keep putting it out. Keep putting it out until something stick. You'll never know. There's no formula. It's not an ABC. There's no rubric. There's no Bible. No one knows. Everybody's path to, to success is so different. Mm. Just put it out and keep putting it out. If you don't, yeah, everybody wants to put a video to each song these days. Wherever you live, yeah. I'm sure there's somewhere beautiful. You go with your iPhone, do a 30-second video with your song, and put out a post just saying, how y'all feeling this record? Do another post, how y'all feeling? Like, just put the music out, guys. This is probably the only one-size-fit-all is PR. Because with Akon Latin Africa, that showed me the value of PR. Like I said, we didn't reach our first goal beginning with it. But there was someone on the team that actually recommended Khan to get PR. When he got PR, we were on Larry Jackson, everywhere, Al Jazeera, BBC, wherever you could think of, he was doing interviews there. So what is he doing now? Now he's spreading the message outside of his own fan base, which is social media. He, now he's going to a whole nother fan base that, that may not be aware of him. Some people don't know who Akon is. They do now, because he's on the right news outlets, right radio stations. You, guys, if you do anything, please get PR. Please get PR. Because you a, need to reach the people that connect to you in a certain way, right? Because we're in a world, too. It's like you have to prove everything. Oh, you're an artist? Prove it. You've been to ADE Beats? Prove it. It's like you need the content, the evidence that, yes, you're doing good. And I know, you know, the, pa the bad thing is not everybody don't want to really live their life in the open. But the day you decide to be an artist, you're a public figure. So maybe that's another choice you need to make. Am, am I willing to be a public figure? Please get PR. Please get PR. How much time should, should you invest in your dream, your PR, your everything? I mean, because I would for say Aiken, there is no time. There's timing. Ooh. And who knows the timing? That's a good quote. That's it. Like I think, and I love artists. I love you guys so much, especially upcoming artists. But I think that's the issue. Like there's, they put, they put their, and we're harder on ourselves than anyone. So the time frame you put on yourself, God, I can only imagine what that is. You know, like take that conception out. Say, listen, I've decided to be an artist. I will do whatever I can, how I can, until I make it. And that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Go hard or go home. Did you enjoy this video? 
Check out the ADE Beats podcast at Spotify and iTunes for the whole conversation. Or check out beats.nl to find all the information about the upcoming ADE Beats event. You can find both links in the description of the video.